Hey folks, Kip Adams from the National Deer Association here. More and more hunters are interested in learning how to process their own deer. This may be due to their desire to have more input on how their deer is handled, or because they're hunting in a disease zone and it's illegal to remove certain parts of the carcass from the area. Regardless of the reason, hunters are seeking this information and I am proud that NDA can help provide it. Today, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to skin and then break down your deer to get that high quality meat off the bones and ready for processing. If you've never done this before, and I know it can sound a little intimidating, but I promise I will walk you through each step of the process and have you going from field to freezer in no time. This is applicable everywhere across the whitetails range and will keep you from losing meat from a deer you harvest during warm temperatures, as well as ensuring you follow any carcass transportation regulations if you're hunting in a disease zone. That being said, Let's head to the skin and shit. So uh, Matt Ross, our director of conservation, shot this nice doe last night. So it's a good opportunity now to show folks exactly, hey, what do we do once we get it? There's some people that immediately just take these to the processor. Uh, there's more and more people though that want to learn, hey, how can I skin this? How can I debone this and take care of some of this myself? Maybe you're in a situation where, you know what, it's really hot out. I don't have a cooler to put this in. Maybe you're traveling a little bit for a hunt. So we can very easily show you how to be able to get it into a cooler that you carry your water and ice and other stuff in. Or as the unfortunate CWD disease continues to spread and there are more travel restrictions on hunters where you can't take the high risk parts of a deer you harvest out of a disease management zone, how you very quickly can break this deer down, get it into a cooler so that's legal and safe for you to be able to travel with it. So we're gonna start with, uh, with skinning. You can skin these laying right on the ground uh, if necessary, but it's a lot nicer to get it in the air. Now we're fortunate here, we have a great gamble system. We have a, a winch to pick this up. If you have this, super, but you don't need this. You can do the same exact thing with a rope in the tree in your backyard. You can have a little boat winch uh, crank to be able to pick these up lots of different ways from inexpensive to nice winches that we can use. The key is, let's just get it off the ground and make it a little easier for ourselves and uh, get this hide off it. Some people will hang them from their head. I'm a huge fan of hanging them from the back legs. I think it's more respectable to the animal that way, but more importantly, it's actually easier to get this hide off if we start at the back legs and allow gravity to pull this forward as we go. So we're gonna start with uh, a knife and some people carry a, a big old Bowie knife on them. If you want to do that, that's fine. You don't need a big knife for this. A very small knife like this, a jack knife, uh, anything works well as long as the, the blade is nice and sharp. I'll start by saying there's many different ways you can do this. I'm not telling you the way I'm gonna do it is the only way or even the best way. It is one way, it works very well for me. And, and if you follow this, it'll work well for you too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the back here. I'm just gonna skin this out to the end of each leg, work it around that back leg, and then just work this down through the body. The one key to this is, is where we have cut into behind the back leg here, this little notch to be able to hang it. We need to make sure we do not cut through this. Otherwise, we lose the ability for the deer to hang and it'll fall. Other than that, that's the only thing that we need to watch for. So I'm gonna get my knife just under the skin here and work my way up. If you cut into the meat a little bit, it's not the end of the world, but we try to, to not cut into the meat. And if you'll notice, I am cutting from the inside out, not on the outside in. If we do this, we're actually cutting the hairs, then they end up stuck all over the meat. Just more work for you to be picking off and it doesn't keep it as clean. So inside out allows us to get the hide off without cutting those hairs and can make our job a lot easier. Now, once we have this up, we can start pulling with our hands and just working this around. Any place that it's hard, we can just Hit the edge of it with the tip of this knife and be able to peel this and what i like to do is just get it started here around the end and then actually we'll grab and just pull this down this deer was kept in a cooler last night we're in late october here but it's unseasonably warm here in pennsylvania so uh, many times we actually could hang this deer outside uh, but that wasn't the case uh, they have the cooler here it was a little bit warm so we put this deer in the cooler and what that means is this deer has been kept at a refrigeration temperature so the hide starts to stick on it a little bit and you can see how easily still this is coming off if you skin a deer uh, close or quickly after you've harvested it and the body is still warm at all the hide literally almost falls right off the colder this gets or the longer it gets the more that this meat uh, cools down and the hide comes off a little more difficult, but you can see this is very, very easy to pull off still. Now, in a winter situation, if this is, uh, deer freezes, the hide can definitely be more difficult, never impossible, but um, more difficult than we have right now. So we still have a pretty easy job getting this off. 
if you are in a situation where maybe you're at deer camp and you're outside and you're gonna be there for a few days and it's cold enough to be like that, the hide also can act as a cover or a protectant over, over the meat. So there's, there's different situations where it may be preferred or not to skin it, but uh, if in doubt, you know, if it's plenty cold enough, then nothing at, at all wrong with leaving that hide on. If it's warm at all though, get it off there to allow that meat to start being able to cool down so you don't ruin any of it. And then so we can get it right into a cooler. All right, so we got the one back leg done. We're gonna do the second leg here. All right, so we have this pulled off the back. You, we could continue this all the way down and work great. Or if you happen to have, this is a great contraption. There's lots of things as hunters that, that we have the opportunity to buy that we don't necessarily need. This is a great option for skinning to be able to grab this and pull. I had this help pull this right off. Not necessary. We can grab, continue to skin the way we were, but you can see how quickly this helps us peel this down. And we're also starting to see some of all this exterior fat on this animal. It gives us an indication of quality of the habitat that the animal came from. An idea of, hey, are there more deer than should be there? Or, you know, is everybody getting enough to eat? Because as they get more to eat, particularly this time of the year where they're putting on that layer of fat to survive winter, this is all evidence in the amount of back fat that this deer has around it. So we can peel this away now. This is all connective tissue here in the stomach. This is not meat that we're gonna consume, so we can cut this. Take this right off of this hide. And as you can see, begin to work down. We have our tail, we can continue to pull this out. We're actually just gonna cut the tail right off anyway. We don't need that. We'll discard that. Work the hide down. So very simple process. Any point we get stuck, we can just trim a little bit of it. Keep pulling. Now I usually will stop before I get all the way down and get rid of my front legs. We have meat all the way down on this shank. So I'm gonna cut around here, then use either a lopping shears or a bone saw to remove it here. Go all the way around the leg. Because if anybody's ever used a bone saw or lopping shears, no, they work great on bone, not nearly as good on muscle. So if we cut through the muscle and get to that bone, it makes it much easier for a bone saw to go through. Do that little bit of meat on the other side. Our leg is off, we'll do the same thing on the other one. And then when we skin this, we'll actually just skin right over the front of these. If you don't have a bone saw, almost everybody has a pair of lopping shears. We can use this for the other leg to cut through that bone. Most people need extra things that we have to buy. Many hunters have this stuff laying around anyway. Now, we could continue to skin and just tube that right off there. Sometimes it's easier to go right up just like we did on the back legs, being very careful to not be cutting towards you, not having this hand up here and going toward me. My hand is back. So that if I do slip, I will either cut air or just the deer, not myself. Now, we'll just begin to continue to pull and skin this down. Show an example of this on this side. All right, once we get down to the front legs, you see we can get, now get our hand in behind, pull some of that off. We're here on the neck. Some people will cut the neck off here and think, well, there's not much meat. Strongly discourage that. There is a great roast on a neck. High quality meat has a lot of connective tissue in it, so it's not something that you're gonna make steaks out of or, uh, or stew meat or something, but great for grinding and having ground meat or excellent, excellent roast. All that connective tissue uh, melts away and uh, high quality choice of meat. So uh, we're gonna skin this all the way up to the base of the skull. Now, one word of caution with this. If you were in a zone, a disease management zone, relative to chronic waste and disease, in most of those, you cannot travel outside of that zone with your deer with the high-risk parts attached. The high-risk parts are the eyes, the brain, the lymph nodes, the spleen, the backbone, so the central nervous system. So what that means is we need to get this meat off of those parts so we can leave the carcass in the zone. Also, if you're in a disease zone, experts recommend you do not cut through 
the backbone, the central nervous system. That's where the infectious materials accumulate in a deer. You don't want to get those on your knife, your saw, or whatever. Now, there's no evidence that CWD can negatively impact humans. However, both the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization strongly encourage you to not eat deer from a disease zone until you receive a satisfactory test back from the state wildlife agency that the, the deer doesn't have it, it's okay. At the same time, they recommend that you don't cut through the central nervous system or the backbone. If you do, you can clean your knives with a 10% bleach solution, which is totally fine. But with this, if I am not in a disease zone, I would just cut the head off here and move forward. If I am in a disease zone, I still want this meat off the neck so we could stop here. And rather than taking this whole neck roast, then I would just cut the meat away from the neck or the backbone here all the way around it. We do lose a little bit that's on it, but that is at least another way if you're in a zone to stay safe and still be able to use all the high quality meat from this animal. The next step is, let's take this, let's get this meat off this carcass so that we can get the meat into a cooler, help cool it down, or maybe we're getting ready to go home and uh, we have to get it into a situation where uh, you know, we're able to travel with it. So there's lots of different ways that, that we can cut this deer up. What I'm gonna show you is a way that, that I have used for years. It's a way that my father taught me, not promising you it's the best way, certainly not the only way, but it is one way that's very effective at getting the meat off and, uh, and allowing you to get this high quality venison home and in the freezer. We're gonna start with the front legs. Deer are unique in that, unlike the hind legs run like our hips, this is not a ball and socket on this. And this is one of the things that makes deer so cool and allows them to avoid predators the way they do. This bone is actually hooked to the body via a muscle and cartilage. It's not a ball and socket, or it's not a bone that's hooked it in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove this shoulder first to get it out of the way. We're gonna cut behind it and just go around. And as we do, I will peel this open. And the idea is to just get this whole front leg off of this deer. So I will cut around behind. Then I'm gonna come in underneath and just cut through. There's no bones that I'm going through. So just and peel it and just keep slicing this away. And you can see how easily with just a little bitty knife, we have removed the whole front leg. This is all legal to travel, no restrictions at all here. So this can go in the cooler. And with a cooler like this, it's best if you have ice on the bottom and lay the meat on top of it. If ice is on the bottom and in the meat, that acts more like a freezer. If you have the meat on the bottom and ice on top, that's more like a refrigerator which isn't as good, and then obviously as it, dry, as it melts, it goes down over it. We want to keep our meat out of water. So ice on the bottom, lay the stuff on top. We're going to do the exact same thing with the other front leg. Just cut through behind it. Pull it open as we go. We can take an opportunity. You can see Matt had a great shot here. With this come through, we have some, some of the, the dried blood. We could trim that away now, or we can just get it in here and then take care of that during the next step of this when we're actually processing the meat. So we're gonna say, it is hot. We wanna get this cooled down as quickly as we can. So let's just get it in the cooler so we don't lose any of it. And we can trim a little bit of injured stuff later. We have the other front leg in the cooler. Now we have our neck roast. I'm gonna cut right down through to the bone. Remember, if we're in a disease zone, we're not gonna cut through that bone because of the infectious materials accumulating in that backbone. But let's say, for example, let's say we are in a disease zone. So what do we do now if I can't cut through it? Well, we can still remove this meat off just by cutting down to the neck or the spine, removing this meat. We can still use this in a roast for like a crock pot situation. We can put this in the grinder and grind it up for ground meat. We still have lots of opportunities with this and there's far more meat around the neck of a deer than many people realize. And as long as it's cooked low and slow, all of this stuff goes away and we're left with a high quality table fare. I much prefer to leave this as a roast if possible, but if I'm in a disease zone, I'm playing it safe. I'm following the rules. I'm cutting that away from the neck. All right, so now we have the neck is all gone. Our legs are gone. The next thing I'm gonna do is take out the back straps. 
The back straps are high quality steak that runs the length of the back on either side of the spine. Right here is the spine. What I'm gonna do is cut right beside the spine all the way up and then cut across. We actually will peel this right out. So with my knife, I'm putting it in. I can feel the end of it is hitting the back. So it's against the backbone on this side and it's hitting bone on the bottom. And then I will just stay against the backbone so that I'm not losing any meat. Cutting forward as far as we can go. And since we've cut our neck off, we go all the way to the end. Right here is where its waist is. So I'm gonna just cut over right by the waist. Now, we can start peeling this out. We have some fat on the outside here that we don't want. So if it's easy to peel away now, we can do that. If not, we can do it later. It's often easier now though to pull a little bit of it away and it clearly defines this rectangular piece of meat that we're after. And you can see even below this, I really haven't, you know, I haven't cut across muscle groups. I haven't done anything. So anybody that just works this a little bit can clearly see, oh yeah, right there is what he's talking about. So what I'm gonna do, since I'm left-handed, I'm gonna get my fingers behind it, just cut this away from the backbone, get it started peeling down, and then just work this whole piece out. And if you've ever filleted a fish, it's kind of the same thing. We are just working the meat off the bone. It's all bones under, it's all, it's a spine here, it's bones underneath. I am just working the meat away from those. And this is one chunk of meat. So we're not trying to separate different muscle groups, but very simple process as we come forward. And this is the preferred chunk of meat by most deer hunters from their, from their animal. One of two back straps, very tender, great chunk of meat, highly, highly sought after. So now we have removed almost everything. We actually are going to turn on this. I'm going to show you. This is the tenderloins. This is the only piece of meat on the inside of the body that we're eating with the exception of the organs like heart or liver. But these are, as they name implies, tenderloins, these are the most tender cuts of meat in the entire deer. We literally can pull these out with our fingers if we wanted. But what I'm gonna do is just right at the base of where our hands are, can cut across to get it started. Just like the back straps, we will just peel it away. And you have to be careful of this. This is so tender that it, it's easy to rip. Some hunters don't realize these are even on the inside and they get discarded with a carcass, which is a terrible shame because it is the most tender piece of meat in the whole body. So now we have our tenderloins are out, our back straps are off, we got our neck, we have both of the front legs. The only thing that's left is the hind quarters. This is a little more complex than the rest of it, but not difficult at all. We can do uh, the same thing here. The purpose now is let's get this meat off from the legs. Now he has the main uh, leg bone here, the femur, comes out about where my knife is and connects with the lower leg bones. There are multiple muscle masses that we have here. Everything else, you know, we've pulled one thing and it's come off. So with this one, there's multiple ways we can get this off. I am gonna show you how I do it to pull all of this off and then be able to put the entire thing in and then we will separate the actual muscle masses once we get back home but we can do this quickly and easily to get the deer cooled down or to remove any of the high risk parts to make this able to travel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut in right here, right to the bone, and I'm going to feel when my knife hits that femur, then I'm gonna follow the femur out to the front. I will cut right around the front of the leg, or in this case, the bottom of the leg, follow the leg bone up the back, circle all the way around here, and then we will remove it from the pelvis and you'll see we'll allow gravity to help us pull this right off. So there are two muscle masses right here. I'm gonna start right in between the two of them. You can see the white line that comes down that helps separate them. So I'm gonna go in and now, if you can hear that clicking, my knife is hitting the femur. So I have found the femur. I am just then going to follow that femur up, moving my hand so I'm not cutting toward me. So if I slip, 
I'm just cutting the air. I can feel my knife right against the femur. I'm gonna come up. The femur's getting closer to the skin. Come right around the front. This is all hard. I can't cut through this, so I just get down and below that to where I can cut through. And if when we get to all this off, if we left a little bit of meat on the bone or something, that's not the end of the world. A professional chef would tell you, ooh, that's taboo, because he or she is really good at this, far better than me. But as you'll see, as I get this off, if there are little chunks of meat left there, we can still just cut them off, put them in our cooler, and uh, add those to a, either a stew meat package or something that we'll grind when we get home. All right, so I'm below it. I can still feel the femur here. Now I can see where all this meat is, so I am going to then keep working around. I'm still feeling the femur. I'm gonna come up and take advantage now of this big muscle mass. Right here is how this is connected. We cannot cut that or this thing is gonna fall. So I'm gonna stay below that, cut in right to the femur. Can feel it, connect my other cut. And now just continue around the leg. Working against the bone or just feeling where that bone is the whole time. And as we start to peel this off, I'll be able to show you where that femur is and uh, it'll be a little easier to visualize. So if we peel through here, look right here is the femur. Now we will just fillet this meat away from it. Coming around, and the more it works away, the easier it is to see what's there. Okay, now to be able to get this here, we got to separate it from the middle. So we're all the way around the femur, I'm staying against it, and I'm coming around and getting right against the pelvis. And we can even, so you see this, I'm going to split right between the two hindquarters. And since I am to the pelvis, this will start to peel off here now and away. And just like we did for the back strap, I'm just scraping against the bone and just peeling this muscle mass away from it. If there's any little thing hooked here, we just work and pull. You see that leg bone is becoming exposed. And at any point, I just stay against the bone the whole thing is coming off. And then we have done all of this with this little knife. So if you have a bigger knife you like, nothing wrong with that at all, but we don't need a huge knife to be able to do this with. Something with a good strong blade, a nice sharp knife, make a real easy job of this. All right, so we have it off the femur. We are here to the back now. I'm gonna come against this part of the backbone and come up just like we did with the back strap. Just stay right against it. Come straight down. And then now we can peel this too. And there's nothing magic about anything I've done. We literally are just feeling where the bone is and cutting the meat away from it. The weight of this hind quarter pulls it away, keeps it so I can see what I'm doing. And there we go, we have the entire hind quarter deboned. See how it all was? All of our different muscle masses, our sirloin and tips, our rounds, all of that is in here. This will go in the cooler. We can separate all of this later into the different muscle groups that we will then choose to either make roast out of or steaks or ground meat or stew or jerky or whatever. But now this is legal to travel anywhere regardless of any restrictions on zones. It's small enough that we can get it into a cooler and as you can see, all we did here is bone, here is bone. We will come back and cut this off because we can use this for ground meat. Some people like to leave this whole shank and they'll eat the shank however you prefer. You can cut, wait till we get done and then cut this whole leg off or I actually will just grind this meat. So I cut the muscle masses off the leg, include that. So now this whole side is done. We will do the exact same thing on this side again and have everything in the cooler. One question I often get by people is, well, what about the ribs? And I will say this, I am a huge fan of ribs. I love pork ribs, I love beef ribs. I would say this from a deer end, I have eaten plenty of deer ribs 
There is very, very little meat here though. Certainly nowhere near as much as there is on a, uh, a steer or, or, or a pig. But if you look, this is all of the meat there is off that rib. And by the time this cooks, it just cooks down to almost nothing. So if you absolutely want to use every ounce, you certainly can cut this meat out. You could take this whole side of ribs off and cook it all at once. But uh, there is very, very little meat on those. And uh, I like to give a little bit back to nature, so uh, I will put these out. And uh, you'll see chickadees and many of other animals taking advantage of that. So it feels nice to give back. However, if you are in a disease zone, it's actually better to bury that on the property or discard it in the landfill such that other animals aren't removing some of these materials, scattering them around and potentially increasing the spread of this disease. So with that, we have the carcass now. It's completely deboned. Been very difficult to travel with this much. It's illegal to travel this much in many areas. You can see we quickly got this all into a cooler. We can take this now and easily put that into the back of the truck, a trunk of a car, take it wherever we need, get it home, take the next step of actually processing this meat, getting it into our freezer and providing high quality table fare for our family and friends. And there you have it. We just went through all the necessary steps on how to process the deer effectively, efficiently and safely according to chronic waste and disease guidelines. I hope you learned something from this video that'll help you this fall and thanks for watching. For anything else deer related, be sure to check us out online at deerassociation.com.